I'd like to talk about a very common but mistaken idea. And that is the idea that shareholders own corporations and that all corporations are supposed to do is, quote, maximize shareholder value, close quote. Now, the first thing that is important to realize about this idea is that it's pretty new. Up until the late 1970s, or early 1980s, people in business had a very different idea about what corporations were and what they were supposed to do. Corporations were viewed as great social institutions, social and economic institutions that were supposed to serve many different constituencies, including not only shareholders, but also their customers, their employees, their creditors, and their local communities, maybe even society as a whole. And this philosophy was called managerialism. But managerialism gets replaced around the 1970s, early 1980s, by this new idea that shareholders own corporations and that they should maximize shareholder value. And this idea actually starts to change the business world. It influences the rules that the Securities Exchange Commission passes. So that the Securities Exchange Commission passes several new rules that are designed to give the shareholders of the corporation more power and more influence over their boards of directors. It influences the tax code, where in 1993 we get a new rule that says that companies that want tax deductibility must tie their executive pay to a so-called objective performance metric, which means that share price becomes the determining factor in how much executives are paid. And this idea gets embraced by an entire generation of professors and uh, political leaders and policymakers and especially business leaders who all collectively come to believe that corporations belong to shareholders and that they should be run to maximize shareholder value. And here is the problem. Although this idea now drives much of the American business sector, it doesn't seem to be working out that well. It doesn't work out that well for corporations. The number of publicly listed companies in the United States has dropped from more, from more than 9,000 at the beginning of the 1990s to fewer than 4,000 today. The life expectancy of public companies has declined even more severely. The average member of the Fortune 500 was on that list for 75 years a few decades ago. Today, the average Fortune 500 company can only be expect to be on that list for about 15 years. Companies are cutting back on their reinvestment. It used to be that companies reinvested 40% or more of their profits back in the business. Now it's less than 10%. A lot of people believe that our companies are becoming less innovative. And when you look at shareholder returns, the odd thing is that maximizing shareholder value doesn't seem to have increased shareholder value. Shareholder returns are, if anything, slightly less than they were in the managerialist era. What's going wrong? The problem with this shareholder value philosophy is that it's really just an ideology, almost a religion. It's not backed up by the facts, it's not backed up by corporate law, and it's not backed up by corporate economics once you understand what corporations really are. We've already looked at some of the evidence and we've seen how the embrace of shareholder value thinking has been accompanied by declining numbers of corporations, declining corporate life expectancy, reduced innovation, reduced investment, and even reduced shareholder returns. But when we look at the law of corporations, it really doesn't make sense. So first of all, let's see what corporate law, as reflected in state codes and the charters of corporations themselves, says about what corporations are supposed to do. Codes and charters don't say corporations have to maximize shareholder value. What they say is that corporations can be run for any lawful purpose. No requirement of maximizing shareholder value, even though someone creating a company could put that in the charter if they wanted to. I've been looking for that in charters for years. I've never seen it. Now, when we look at case law, it's a little bit more confusing because Judges say different things about what corporations are supposed to do. Some judges in some cases say they should pursue profits or shareholder value. Other judges in other cases say differently. For example, Supreme Court Justice Alito recently said in the Hobby Lobby decision that modern corporation law does not require companies to maximize profits at the expense of everything else, and many do not. So what judges say is kind of all over the lot. But good lawyers don't pay attention to what judges say about their thinking. 
good lawyers pay attention to the part of the case we call the holding. That is, what will the court actually require a corporation to do? And when you look at the holdings of corporate law cases, instead of what judges say, what we call mere dicta, the holdings are very clear. Courts simply will not require the directors of corporations to try to maximize shareholder profits or shareholder value. Instead, directors are protected by something called the business judgment rule, which says that as long as the directors are operating in what they honestly believe is the best interest of the corporate entity, then they are protected. There are a couple of cases where the directors of companies have been required to pay out dividends to shareholders, but if you look at those cases, you'll see very quickly, those are actually not cases about what corporations are supposed to do. They're cases that involve a conflict between a majority controlling shareholder and a minority shareholder, and the payouts were made to the minority as a matter of fairness in those particular closely held companies. So corporate law does not support the shareholder value myth. When you look at economics, economic theory doesn't support the notion that you have to maximize shareholder value either. Let's start with the idea that shareholders own corporations. Legally, that's just plain wrong. Corporations as legal persons own themselves. What shareholders own is a contract with the corporation called a share of stock that gives shareholders very limited rights, just as creditors have debt contracts with corporations, and employees have employment contracts. Shareholders don't own companies, companies own themselves. A more sophisticated version of this economic argument says that shareholders are the so-called residual claimants in corporations, entitled to every penny that's left over after the corporation has met its obligations to other stakeholders like creditors or taxing authorities or employees. Again, that's legally erroneous. A corporation is its own residual claimant. Shareholders don't get anything from the corporation except dividends, and it's the board of directors that decides whether or not the company will pay dividends. Now at this point, people who have taken corporate finance are likely to object, but if the corporation doesn't pay dividends, then the money will be saved and it'll increase the value of the stock, so isn't the money the shareholders anyway? To which I say, no, actually it's not, because remember, it's the board of directors that decides what to do with corporate profits. They could retain them and increase the value of the company's shares, but they can also use those profits to pay employees higher salaries, to make philanthropic contributions, to invest more in research and development, to provide better customer support, or even to pay taxes instead of moving their companies offshore to eliminate their U.S. tax burden. So, Neither in the law nor in the economics is there any basis for this notion that somehow shareholders own corporations and corporations are supposed to maximize shareholder value. And if you start to think about who shareholders really are, you'll quickly realize that idea doesn't even make sense. Perhaps the biggest flaw in the shareholder value myth is its fundamentally mistaken idea about who shareholders really are. Shareholder value maximization talk assumes that all shareholders are the same, and that all they care about is what's happening to the company's stock price. Actually, all they care about under this theory is what's happening to the stock price tomorrow. They're not even worried about the stock price five or 10 years from now. And this very simplified model of what you might almost call a platonic shareholder, a hypothetical platonic shareholder who only cares about the stock price of one company at one moment in time, is completely unrealistic. Real shareholders are people, and they have many differing interests. They're not all the same. For example, one big difference among shareholders is whether they're thinking short-term or long-term. Most people who are investing in the stock market are investing for retirement, or perhaps a child's college tuition or some other long-term project. But there are some shareholders, especially, for example, activist hedge funds, that buy shares intending to hold them for a year or maybe two years at most. Those two groups have very different interests. Long-term shareholders want the company to invest for the future and take care of its employees and customers so it'll operate sustainably over time. Short-term hedge funds don't care. Anything that gets the stock price up in the next year is good enough for them. And there are lots of ways to get the stock price up by taking on leverage, by cutting research and development, by firing employees. Lots of ways to get the stock price up in the short term, 
but many of them end up hurting the company in the long term, which is a problem for long-term shareholders. Another key difference among shareholders is whether they're diversified, that means they own stock in lots of different companies, or whether they only own stock in one or two companies. If you're a diversified shareholder, you care whether your corporation is making money by doing something anti-competitive that's hurting the profits in another corporation you also own. If you own stock and bonds, you don't want your company leveraging in a fashion, taking on debt that is, in a fashion that drives up the share price, but makes it less likely your bonds will be paid off. But if all you own is stock in a single company, or maybe stock in two or three companies, which is typical for many hedge funds, then you don't care about the consequences for other investments. You just care about getting that share price up at that one company, preferably tomorrow. And remember, real shareholders are not just shareholders. They're also employees and customers and citizens and taxpayers. They want their corporations to make money, but not by ruining the environment or firing them and causing them to lose their job or producing shoddy products that they regret buying or failing to pay taxes, corporate taxes, so that individual tax rates go up. Most people are what we call universal investors who have a wide range of interests and want our companies to be run in ways that are consistent with all of our interests, not just this focus on share price. Finally, and really this is good news, most real shareholders are also real human beings who have a conscience and who care about others and have ethical standards. They don't want their companies to profit from polluting or laying off people unnecessarily or cheating or abusing their customers, as in the case of, for example, Volkswagen that was cheating on its emission standards, or United, which was just embroiled in a controversy over maltreatment of passengers. Most shareholders are what we call pro-social, meaning they understand and they are happy to be concerned about the interests of other people, the planet, and future generations. What do we call a shareholder, or for that matter, what do we call anyone who only focuses on making as much money for themselves in the immediate future, even if this involves harming others or breaking the rules? We call that person a psychopath. And the evidence suggests that while psychopaths exist, they usually account for only 2 to 4% of the population, and that's probably true for shareholders as well.